But um, if you guys have any questions, and Adam, I, maybe you want to comment on any of the stuff that you're doing regarding elbows and PRP, and maybe the ulnar collateral ligament aspect, you know, partial tears, ulnar collateral ligament. Yeah, I've done a lot of the elbows, golfers elbow, tennis elbow, ulnar collateral ligament, um, PRP, fantastic. Pieces uh, instead of cortisone, or some patients who fail cortisone, you um, can measure it. And, and Dr. Gosens has a great study on, um, just came out through uh, talking about it's a two year follow up. It's from the Netherlands on lateral condylitis, comparing cortisone to PRP, follow up to two years, very nice results. Cortisone kind of faded off after a few weeks, and the, and the VAS pain score is actually so positive, benefit all the way up to two years. Yeah, because I know I saw some uh, in the academy. There was uh, some studies uh, from HSS, I think, that actually talks about partial tears and the final ligaments. And as far as the PRP injection, it was partial tears and some of these ball players and actually get pretty good results with that, too. Yes. I, I did actually I have a uh, kid that I saw today is followed three weeks from the home run collateral. He's a baseball player, high school level. And uh, he had a, uh, on that, on an MRI, basically a partial tear on the collateral ligament. He didn't have anything on the, on the common uh, like lateral, uh, sorry, medial up the condo, the common flexor was fine. It's an isolated nerve ultrasound, we did PRP. And uh, he did, they basically tested, I wanted to clean the clinic, was this, I think it's called like milkmaid kind of test or something. Yeah, the extension yeah, stress test. Yeah, kind of like you stress on the thumb. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, with that, uh, he had no pain today, three weeks out. And he was quite tender, right? Yeah. That's great. That's great. There's a lot of promising stuff out there. Got a little bit of information on what to look for and um, how to do the appropriate exams. And want to give us a call if you need us. I have a question on the rehab post, you know, surgical. I mean, still we've got patients nine months, a year out, they don't have full range of motion. They're really frustrated. I mean, what do you what do you tell them? What do you? I mean, for the normal recovery, shoulder. A oh, shoulder. Yeah, normal recovery, average. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to shoulders in regards I mean, to adhesive capsulitis, um, I usually give them a bit about, I mean, I sometimes give them about four to six months before I throw in the towel for any of those adhesive capsulitis patients. Um, but, uh, but if they're at about six months, that's the point where usually I, you know, they should be back at work and full activities, their cuff should be well healed by then. Um, if they're not, you know, symmetric at that point, I give them the option of a capsular release, and I usually do those arthroscopically with a camera in there and actually release the scar tissue and then manipulate them afterwards. Um, and so, and then I've got great results with that, and it's, I've, I've done well with that. So, um, it might be interesting to see what results Adam gets from with these, um, these uh, patients that he's injecting to disrupt the capsule. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I usually do about six months. And then they, they're in a lot of pain for three, four weeks. Afterwards, you mean? Afterwards. Yeah, so the pain is the big issue afterwards, but the yeah. thing is, is that I get them, I tell them they need to be seeing. The very next day, yeah, Next start. day, start moving. A lot of times I give them block uh, before they do their, you know, right. after they do the surgery, and they'll look at the catheter for about three, two or three days just so they keep the motion and then keep you guys moving them. And, uh, and have them see you uh, almost on a daily basis and then just tell them, I mean, they're gonna have to take the Vicodin or, or whatever pain medicine they're gonna have to take during that process to get them through it. But it usually lasts about you know, four to six weeks or so, you know, until they get a little bit more comfortable you know, with emotions. The last thing you don't wanna have happen is the scarring back down. And, um, and, and everybody's different regarding the healing. I see more of these uh, adhesive capsulitis, uh, capsulitis issues in patients that are like, I would mention of diabetics and uh, women and uh, patients that have had uh, thyroid problems as well. And then recently, uh, I think patients that have a uh, history of keloid inflammation, uh, I think have, have a high risk of developing capsulitis. Any other questions? Thanks a lot.